So you have new characters, new performers in this one. Talk a little bit about the challenges you face balancing out both the time, energy, and focus between the new characters and our established ones. Well, with the new characters, you know, there's there's fun to be had in the sense of you're creating kind of from the ground up. Obviously, you have the comic book reference, but they haven't been playing it for three movies, and so figuring out the look and figuring out the mannerisms and and. Uh, I mean, literally choreographing the movement, and and uh, um, and of course finding the right people, uh, which was the first and actually easiest step. Um, you know, I only ever wanted Aaron uh, to play Quicksilver, and uh, I sat down with Lizzie once, and only ever wanted her to play everything else. <laughs> so, um, you know, and they're both they both been working for a while. They're both, you know, there's a, there's a nervousness. Um, from the new guys that that has that keeps their energy kind of percolating, um, which is is kind of great. Um, at the same time, uh, you know they were both right in the pocket from the moment they stepped on the screen. So um, for me, it's just a question of tweaking, and and it's not that different from directing the other guys. What was it that made? Ultron the right foil for the Avengers this time around and then what made James Spader the right guy to you know breathe life into Ultron? Ultron's been a classic Avengers nemesis for decades and um, I happen to particularly like robot stories. Ultron has been a, a major nemesis for the Avengers in the comics for decades and um, he is you know one of their top three all-time villains and I love robot stories and but I never really felt I understood Ultron so it was sort of a chance to create my version of Ultron um, and my version of Ultron is not totally sane um, you know why is he angry all the time because there's something bothering him and and um, I wanted somebody who could be you know who could be an eight-foot Robot, you know, one of the other great things about him is physically he's a match for the Avengers, and then he can create more matches for the Avengers. Um, uh, but uh, but as a person, I wanted somebody who could have all the gravitas and then also go to a very comedic, very sort of left of center place. And James is exactly that guy. I've seen him do both so well. Um, and uh, um, I just, as soon as I mentioned him to Marvel, that we never had another conversation again. It was just like, no, there's only one person for this. What do you hope uh, audiences get out of Avengers Age of Ultron as they walk out of the theaters this time around? Um, uh, for everybody, uh, I want them to have a wonderful time, but you know, I hope that they have a, you know, a deeper understanding um, of the characters. I hope that they emotionally connect to them in a way that they never did before. And I hope they have a lot of questions. I want people to walk out having conversations about the meaning and about the characters and what's next and why did they do that and, and what's the relationship there. And, you know, I want, to, uh, you know, I want, when I play with a theme and I play with all these characters, what I want to engender is, is, is more dialogue. I don't want people to go, well, they told us, you know, it's wrong. Yeah, we learned that it's wrong to ship school. You know, it's, it's, it's not what I want them to take away. I want them to go. The questions that Ultron raised are still to be asked. Um, and the question of what a superhero is and whether it's useful or destructive and who we all are, they're still out there and, and they're still interesting. And, and, but I also had a really good time.